Hello, everyone. Thank you for sticking around. Uh, I seem to always get stuck with the last time slot of the day, so it's always good to see people hang around and make it through the day. Uh, before we get started, a few things I'm not going to cover in this talk. This is not going to be a talk where you learn how to use GitHub Actions in your projects, uh, but you'll learn some core concepts behind them and how they work. Um, and that might spark some, some creativity in your mind as far as going back and learning a little bit more and implementing them in your own projects. WordPress is also a very large project and we have some very unique challenges that we'll cover. And what we choose to do and how we approach things may not be right for your projects, um, but they're very interesting nonetheless. And this talk is mainly focused on the WordPress core code base after Gutenberg is merged into it in SVN. Uh, we mirror the WordPress code base to GitHub, uh, which I'll cover. Mostly it's a convenience and a courtesy, but I'll cover that in a little bit more detail. Um, and we share a lot of things with the Gutenberg repo as far as their GitHub actions and how they're implemented. We work together on a lot of things. Um, and I'll happily answer any questions you have about that as well. I'm from New Bedford, Massachusetts. I've been a WordPress user for a long time. I've been a uh, committer since 2018. I maintain several components in WordPress, uh, including the build and test tool component, which this talk falls under. Since 2018, I've been a full-time contributor to WordPress core for, uh, at Bluehost as part of the Five for the Future initiative. If you're interested in learning more about that, I recommend you, you check out Hari's talk tomorrow. Um, and I've also served on several release squads in the past. Uh, most recently, the 6.1 squad, I was a release coordinator, which went out. Uh, we're working on 6.2, so that's the most recent one so right now. Um, you can reach me at Desiroge J pretty much anywhere, the WordPress Slack or Twitter. So to start off, I'm going to take you on a bit of a history lesson. We're going to go back to 2013, um, and WordPress 3.6 gets released. And it's really a difficult time to get started contributing to WordPress. Um, there's a lot of fragmentation, and the WordPress source code is in one repository. All of our tests are in another repository. You have to manually run them. They don't, it's not easy to do. You have to know how to set it up locally. You, there's an implicit build process that happens. Uh, it's a script on a private WordPress.org server. When there's changes to JavaScript and CSS files, those will get built and committed back to the repository. Um, and it's, it's not great because you have your production-ready files mixed with your source code files. And it can be very confusing to know which files to edit and which ones not to. And so WordCamp San Francisco happens at the beginning of the year. And during the hack day, uh, a handful of contributors get together and discuss this and, and how to make this more streamlined and make co contributing to WordPress a little bit more approachable. And after that, Daryl Cooper Smith publishes a roadmap called The New Frontier for Core Development. Um, and the goal around this was to solve these issues. We wanted more people to contribute to WordPress, and it's not easy to do. We need to make that easier if that's going to happen. Um, I, I like to call this the great or reorganization. I don't know if anybody's called it that before, but I'm going to call it that now. And I think that this is one of the most impactful changes in WordPress's history. Um, it's, it's strange to hear that because it doesn't introduce any new user-facing features. Uh, most people had no idea that this happened. But it brought everything under one roof and, and, and really made it uh, contributing to the WordPress core a lot more approachable. So everyone should recognize what this is here. Um, if you have a WordPress website, you'll recognize this as the source code files that you would upload to your server to have a WordPress site. And this is what it looked like before the great reorganization, before the changes that were necessary happened. And this is what it looks like now. Um, there's a lot more files in this, prime, this top directory, but if you have contributed to WordPress, this should look somewhat familiar to you. You can see we have a source folder directory, and all the files that were in that previous view are moved into that source folder. The tests that were in a separate repository are now in the same repository, just in a folder, um, test folder. The tools that were also in another repository, at this time they were internationalization tools, those get moved into a new folder as well. And we're able to adopt a real build process using Grunt 
and uh, NPM dependencies here. So now all of that stuff that happened behind the scenes on that private server, you can run that locally on your own and, and make changes to these build processes, do some testing, um, add steps to it to, to introduce new things like image minimization or um, CSS preprocessing was added later. And the, the, the other repository won't go anywhere. It's going to stay there because a lot of people were installing WordPress from that repository, and so we didn't want to break anything there. After WordPress 3.7 is released, they, uh, the contributors in the project start to take advantage of these different tools that that opens the door for. One of the first ones that we start using is Travis CI. Um, if you're not familiar with what CI or CD is, it's continuous integration or continuous delivery. And these are platforms that allow developers to perform some automated processes or steps uh, to accomplish tasks in their software. So most commonly, this will be building your software. This will be testing it, deploying code to production or staging servers. And by integrating this service, the WordPress unit tests are now going to be running on every change. And so this is what the first iteration, I had to do some digging, but this is what it looked like when it was initially introduced into the code base. We tested every version of PHP that was supported at the time. We would run that build process that was now in the root of the repository. And we would just run our, our unit tests um, under these different conditions, under these different versions of PHP. And ultimately, this just allows us to write higher quality software. Um, we're going to detect issues earlier. We're going to know um, how many versions of PHP they, they affect. Um, and before things get out in the wild, we're going to better be able to problem solve and, and correct any mistakes that we make. And this file continues to grow over time. We add things like JavaScript testing, code style linting. Um, in 5.5, we add PHP compatibility testing, which will test that we're not uh, using anything that's deprecated in certain versions of PHP. And at the end of 2018, there's another monumental milestone in the project's history. You might have heard of it. It's called Gutenberg. And before WordPress 5.0, the Guten merge happens, and we enter into the block era. And this was important for the context of this story because the Gutenberg project was built in GitHub as a plugin. And it's still there to this day and still built the same way. Uh, but releases to WordPress core are managed in SVN. And so when a release is coming up, the changes that are ready in Gutenberg are merged into core SVN. And that's how we, right now, that's how we manage that. So I, I mentioned that the WordPress SVN repository is mirrored to GitHub. Um, and previously, we didn't accept contributions to that. It was only a courtesy if you preferred to deploy from Git directly as opposed to SVN. But we decide that now with Gutenberg, a lot of our contributors are already on GitHub. And so why not embrace that a little bit and meet them there? So we introduced a feature where if you link, you mention a track URL to a track ticket, it will automatically pull it in on track and point to that pull request and show you some status and information about it. And so this opens the door to a lot of contributors that may not enjoy using SVN and some straight up refuse to use SVN. Um, and we're meeting those contributors where they are and opening the door to some people that might not be able to con contribute through track. And with every pull request, this also means that the code changes you're suggesting are going to be run through all the tests and automated processes on Travis. And that wasn't done previously. If you were updating a, uploading a patch to a ticket, none of those tests were happening. So in order to better keep track of these contributions, we add a way to link your GitHub profile to, um, to your WordPress.org profile. And this allowed us to know, um, you know, everybody's username is not the same. So this allowed us to track who is who and ultimately give them the proper credit that they deserve when the version of WordPresses are released. So in 2020, um, Gutenberg is becoming much more mature. The volume and frequency of contributions is much higher. And we start to see a lot of problems with Travis. Um, specifically, we start to experience very long uh, waiting queues. 
So with more and more contributions, pull requests, every merge, commit, or pull request update is going to trigger a build on Travis. And the way that Travis worked was it managed your, um, your, your builds by concurrent jobs. And so each build would have several jobs that represented different <laughs> test conditions. And um, in, in our case, it's mostly the different versions of PHP that we support, some JavaScript testing, and, and so on. Um, and so we, we had some times where we were waiting four, five, six hours for our, our builds to actually run and, and confirm that uh, you know, our tests were passing and, and, and all of the things that we were checking for. So the Gutenberg team was already entirely in GitHub, and it made a lot of sense for them to move to GitHub Actions at that point. They did that, and we noticed a, a, a pretty good improvement. However, we were, where as more people started using pull requests in GitHub for contributing, um, that starts to come back to pl into play. We start to notice that backlog again. Not as bad as before, but again, every pull request will trigger a build, and then we, we end up with this backlog. This is uh, specifically bad during security releases when we're updating multiple branches of WordPress at, at a time. So after discussing with several other contributors, we decide to do some testing with WordPress core itself using GitHub Actions. We introduced several GitHub Action workflows, and our, our first phase was to introduce feature parity and ensure that everything that's happening on Travis, we could do on GitHub Actions in a similar way. We planned to observe this for a while, collect some data, and then evaluate whether this was going to be a good tool for us to use. And then we would eventually complete or not complete the transition and sunset our use of Travis and um, a service called AppVayor, which we only use to test the build process on Windows uh, machines, which Travis did not support. I want to make this clear that the intention here was not to move WordPress to GitHub. This is something that always comes up. But this was an experiment, and we, we have to be very careful when we choose the tools that we use. We can't just chase the, new, the newest tools and what, what's deemed the best tools. We have to identify the project's goals and what we're trying to accomplish with changes. We have to identify pain points, and then we, when we do that, we can evaluate whether or not we're actually solving those pain points or making them better. Sometimes when you change the tools that you used, uh, it will make it easier for contributors, but it will actually introduce new bottlenecks for maintainers if they can't keep up with, with the influx of contributions. WordPress is also 20 years old almost this year, and that's 20 years of building tools, processes, lessons learned. We have to make sure that we take all of these into account when we evaluate changing our tool sets. Switching off of track means that we have to spend the time evaluating all of those and ensure that they're either rebuilt in a new way or that they'll still work and we don't have any issues that we, we are introducing. And it's all essentially at the, at the, when you boil it down, we're just trying to manage the risk that we're introducing. With GitHub supported, only committers need to worry about SVN now as well. So embracing people where they were to accept these contributions, but still allowing the committers to use the same tool set to commit the changes, that made sense at this point. We're also taking advantage of a more unified interface with this uh, contribution experience. One example of that is this instance here where when a PHP CS code style check is run, we can actually contextually show annotations to the contributor uh, where their failures are occurring. So they would see this, they, would, they wouldn't even need to run the tools locally on their own machine. They can just submit their PR and then they would have more information here. Um, normally you would have to go through the logs of the, the CI build and look at the, the command line output and to, to determine what it was, pull it up in your editor, figure out what's going on. But this makes that a lot more easier. It also opened the door for some better contributor onboarding. This is a workflow that we introduced where when a contributor opens their first pull request to WordPress core, they would get this welcome message with some detailed information as far as um, some expectations we have, set their expectations correctly, and hopefully this will lead to uh, better contribution experiences overall. 
So we get all this done, and about three weeks later, there's a new pricing model announced by Travis CI. And it becomes clear very quickly that we no longer can use Travis for our testing. Within two days, testing across the entire WordPress organization stops. We use up all the credits that they, they gave us when they switched to this new system. And so we have no testing happening for any of the changes that are happening. So obviously this increases the urgency to complete this transition. So change in plans. We're no longer going to observe and collect. We have a very limited amount of time that we did observe, and, and it's working for us. We think that this will be fine to do. So we're going to complete this transition now. So that should be easy, because we already have them committed to track, right? We, we already have them there. Should be easy. If you've contributed before, you know that WordPress has lots of unique challenges. That's, it's not that easy to do to just turn the switch. So let's take a step back and talk a little bit about GitHub Actions and um, how they work, some core concepts. GitHub is, GitHub, uh, this is GitHub's own CI CD platform. The concept uh, at the center is a workflow. And workflows are triggered by events. This can be anything from a pull request is open, a pull request is closed, a change is pushed to a branch, a specific branch. Um, and you can also use GitHub's API to, to trigger events manually. Within workflows, there are virtual machines called runners that execute a defined list of jobs. Jobs are sets of steps that execute on the, on the virtual machine. And steps can be shell scripts that are executed or bundled sets of scripts that are distributed as things called actions. There's a large marketplace of actions that are published and they do everything from caching to checking out repositories to configuring specific versions of uh, different software like Node or PHP. And so we can take use, make use of these actions that have been published and maintained by other people to accomplish what we need to in our workflows. This is an, a simple example of a workflow that um, you could build. When there is a push event to the trunk branch, it's going to run a job that checks out a repository, or the repository that it's in. It's going to set up node 14, which is the version of uh, node that WordPress currently uses. It's going to install NPM dependencies, and then it's going to run the WordPress build script. So as long as all of that completes successfully, this work workflow would pass, and you would know that you haven't introduced any issues. This is a few examples of some UIs you might see. Um, this workflow uses a build strategy matrix to run um, a set of steps on multiple different conditions. So here we're running um, our unit tests on multiple versions of PHP. And then we also send uh, a message to Slack based on the outcome of, that, of those tests. Here's a smaller one where we run the build process on uh, multiple platforms, Windows, Ubuntu, and Mac OS. Again, to just confirm that we're not introducing any problems with the build process and that contributors won't have any, any problems contributing. So back to the challenges. Um, let's talk about why moving to GitHub Actions was easy at first, but then not easy to complete that transition. When WordPress 6.2 comes out in March, there will be 22 versions of WordPress that receive security updates. There are efforts on the way to reduce this number, and we, we just reduced it by eliminating 3.7 through 4.0 recently. But until that happens, we need to make sure that uh, these branches are being tested when security updates are being merged into them. Workflows run in the context of the branch that they are in. So if the workflows are not in these older branches, 4.1, whatever it may be, those old versions, um, they're not going to run at all. So all of these workflows need to be backported to each branch. Testing changes over time as well. Each branch is a specific snapshot of a point in history for the project. There are specific test conditions to that point in time. So it's not as easy as just backporting the same workflow because our PHP version supported is, is our main uh, example of that. They will be different for every version of, of WordPress. 
So we can't use the same test matrix there. We have to make sure that each branch is accurate to that point in time. There were many specific, uh, service-specific hacks on Travis that we used to make this happen. For example, testing PHP 5.2, the images that they had on their service that contained PHP 5.2 were deprecated and considered legacy. And so we had to hard code them in certain ways in our Travis configurations. So we needed to, co to come up with ways to do that in our GitHub Actions. Also in 2019, this, this will help with this, is a local Docker environment was introduced into um, the WordPress code base. It was highly configurable, and it helped provide a consistent environment for contributors to get spun up real quickly to contribute on different versions of PHP, different versions of MySQL, um, and so on. After this was tested, Travis was actually updated to run the unit tests in these Docker containers. So that helped eliminate all of those service-specific hacks that we had to include in our configuration file. But this also only existed in some branches. We introduced it in WordPress 5.3, so it was only present from that version on. We couldn't backport it easily either because the minimum version of Node required to run the NPM dependencies to, to spin up the environment and install WordPress within it was Node 6. As you can see, the 3.7 branch of WordPress ran version 0 0.10.48 of Node.js. Each version of Node.js that we need also has to be present on that WordPress build server that we, we mentioned. We can update the version of Node being used in each branch, but that also means we have to update the versions of NPM dependencies that are being used. This results in another problem that we, we have to weigh carefully. When you update the version of Node, you update the dependencies, and then that results in differences in the built version of the software. The main thing that we see this materialize uh, as is differences in JavaScript files. So we minimized each JavaScript file and CSS file in the build process. So if we update the package responsible for that, every JavaScript and every CSS file gets touched. And this is a big deal because when we do auto updates on these old branches, we aim to not introduce new files, and we also aim to keep the package sizes as small as possible. We try to make as few changes as possible. The reason is that the larger the package size, the higher chance there is that there will be a failure during the auto update. It could be a network error or a timeout. It could be a memory consumption issue. But these are trade-offs that we have to consider carefully. In this instance, we decided it was more important to get this tooling updated and restore our automated testing. And then we would make sure to roll these out carefully and monitor them when this next update went out. As WordPress has grown, its build process has also grown as well. Just like each branch is a snapshot in time of the PHP version supported, it's also a snapshot in time of that build process that was present at the time. Some tools and scripts are not present in these older versions, and so they might build differently or they might have uh, different intricacies that we also have to consider as we update NPM, introduce the Docker environment, and so on. And finally, WordPress Develop was not the only word, uh, repository in the organization that had a Travis configuration. Of the 57 total repositories under the WordPress org, 20 had Travis configurations. So we had to look at each repository that did have one, evaluate whether it still needed it, evaluate what updates were required in that repository, and we had to uh, uh, achieve feature parity in those as well. This was everything from the WordPress importer plugin to the local Docker environment containers, the, the repo that uh, generated and published those. All of these had stopped running within the two days of that change, so we had to evaluate these carefully. So the transition is largely complete. Uh, what's been done? We have more consistent tooling across all of our branches. All of the branches were updated to use the latest version of Node at that time, which was Node 14. We are working to update to uh, support Node 18, which is the current version in Trunk. 
but we likely won't update these older versions for the sa some of the same reasons that I mentioned earlier until it's, uh, it's absolutely necessary. The Docker environment is now uh, in each old branch. So if you wanted to contribute to uh, a security release, if you are on the security team, you can now go back to these older branches and more easily test on different versions of PHP, uh, as well as run the tests in general. The versions of NPM dependencies are now largely consistent across branches. Tools such as Grunt Patch WordPress, which allow you to easily import a patch from a track ticket or a GitHub pull request, is now in all branches. So that will make updating our workflows in the past in the future easier. We've restored all of our automated testing and scanning. The workflow flyers are, are present in all of our old branches. Our Slack notifications are restored so that any failures that occur get reported to Slack and someone is made aware. We also are reporting um, the test results to the host test results page now, which had stopped as well. If you have a hosting company and several, there's I think about 20 or so that do this, um, you can test on your platform the WordPress core code base with every commit and report it back to a central location on WordPress.org. This can also be done using a GitHub action, and that's what we, we use that at Bluehost to do that on our infrastructure. And we report it back to that, uh, that location because if we start to see multiple hosts failing on certain changes, we know that it might be problematic and we have to take a second look. Um, if you're interested in learning more about that, you can come find me um, at the Bluehost booth, and I'm, I'm more than happy to give you more information about that, because the more people that are running these tests and reporting it, the better. We have some things that are left. We have to continue refining this, this contributing experience that this uh, embraces. One thing that we need to look at doing is replacing JS Hint with ESLint. These are tools that will lint your JavaScript files to make sure that you are following um, our coding standards. But JS Hint does not, it's a little outdated and it still works, but it does not support uh, sharing annotations like we were with the PHP coding standards violations. Travis used um, a, the way that Travis reported the outcome of a workflow of, of a build there was one badge that reported a success or a failure. With GitHub Actions, it's a bit different. There uh, is one badge per workflow, and so there's really no canonical result that we can use to say uh, this change is working or this change is not. So we need to look at ways to do that. We need to continue to look at making uh, contributor onboarding better, automated cont contribution tracking, I'm working on something right now that will automatically close PRs when it looks like it's been fixed in WordPress core. And what's next is largely up to you. Maybe you have some ideas of, or, or pain points that you've experienced while contributing to WordPress. We need to continue to think about ways to share this knowledge with our ecosystem. Maybe there are ways that we can publish our actions that plugins and themes can use them in their own projects. So I look forward to your ideas, and hopefully um, you'll look, think about contributing to GitHub Actions and WordPress Core. Thank you.